Today we're looking at a pretty typical 2009 built home in Melbourne, Victoria. Um, we're going to have a look at where the main leakage points are and uh, how airtight they are and some of the issues that they might have with um, good ventilation strategies. There's quite a few downlights here and normally they don't have insulation uh, installed around them for a very good reason. If you want to fix up the majority of these of the, the insulation consistency issues that these have introduced, that you have to change the control gear. A lot of these LED companies don't uh, talk about that, they just say, oh, we're going to swap them all out. But um, the, the key question to ask is, are you changing the control gear so that we can fix up the insulation? <laughs> so uh, that's a bit of a gotcha because, yeah, halogen globes, they use a lot of energy, but it's only when you're turning them on. <laughs> Whereas the gaps in the insulation are uh, costing you 24 by seven when you're heating the house or cooling the house even. For when it comes to building envelope performance, they're in no man's land. They're sort of, they're not in the living area, but they're not in the roof either. And yet they're producing light into the living area. So because of that reason, they affect the performance of your building envelope. Wow, it's a nice big hole around uh, an LED luminaire. These lights must have been on because they're nice and hot. Have they been on? Ah, uh, yes. Will be? They yes. have been, yeah. They're absorbing, because they're made out of metal as well, they'll be absorbing the temperature from inside the house. They're very conductive. So we can add multiple photos to a defect and then we can sort of mark off where the issue is is just here. What we're going to do is once we've recorded all of these uh, thermal imaging issues with insulation inconsistency, we're going to tape up your ducted heating system and do a test with and without the ducted heating system to see how much your distribution and distribution system yeah. leaks compared to your building envelope. Okay. All right. So um, we're not going to be able, I mean, there's, there's obviously, I'm not sure if you've got dr uh, draft stoppers on your uh, exhaust fans in your bathroom and toilet. Um, if they don't, they're going to leak quite a lot and we could potentially tape those up to give you a, a, an air tightness differential sure. between them being untaped and taped. Yeah, but I in most circumstances, the ducted heating system, especially that return which you're leaning against, mm -hmm. can leak amazingly. And the issue with that is that when you run your ducted heating system and you're pulling air from say your roof or underneath the house into your return because it's not very well sealed up inside and it's concealed, you start pressurizing in all the rooms because an air needs equal air coming in to equal air coming out. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll check that and then yeah, we'll see how everything looks. What sort of uh, air tightness do you recommend? So for a normal home, yeah. um, I would recommend around about seven ACH at 50 pascals, because you don't have a ventilation system. You know, it's something that, that the house wasn't designed to be airtight. That's right. Uh, and you've got a family living in here as well. Yes. And the other thing that you've really got to take into consideration though, when yeah. you start tightening up your building envelope, is that you need to then start thinking about how you need to ventilate in some circumstances, like when you're that cooking, right. and yes. um, and and your your bathroom and toilets need to be really well ventilated. So yes. when you have a shower, you need to make sure after 10 or 20 minutes that the fan continues to run in order to get rid of all that moisture that's in the air. And it's extremely uh, important for apartments in a larger home like this one. It's, it, you know, there's a, you've got a lot more room for forgiveness. But in an apartment where you might have two showers and it's just a tiny box, the humidity can go through the roof throughout the building envelope very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, seven, seven to ten is, seven a, is, to ten is a pretty decent air leakage rate. Yeah. The majority of homes that we test, depending on whether they've got evaporative cooling and ducted heating, uh, they can be between ten and fifteen. Ten and fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I went for uh, like to a seminar for NCC, yep. like because they're bringing an update in 2019. They are. They, like are. they are. So over there, there was a discussion going on about yeah. the air tightness. Like yeah. uh, there were some questions from the audience, yes. which what they're saying is we're 
focusing too much of air tightness yes too much of air tightness might not be good as well like you know the passive right. housing yeah the level of air tightness they talk about yeah might be way too much than it's actually needed no something like that. no th th this is the issue where yeah. there's a lot of lack of information yes th to a certain extent you either it's all or nothing all or nothing yeah pretty okay. much so you either go to the extent the whole extreme extent of air tightness mm -hmm. or you don't yeah. the, okay. going halfway can yeah. cause problems all right but but mold in buildings mm -hmm. um can be caused by a building that's too leaky mm -hmm. and by a building that's too airtight mm -hmm. but in the majority of circumstances yes. it's because they're too leaky, too leaky. you yeah. have huge temperature swings mm -hmm. inside the building envelope yeah and when you get those large temperature swings you then start to get um, moisture depositing on surfaces because you're hitting dew point more often okay. than what you should be. One thing that you need to focus on when you start thinking about going towards, you know, seven or five ACH is to put your ventilation systems on steroids. So really your bathroom should have a humidity sensor. You leave it on 24 by 7 and it just turns yeah. on when it needs to. Yeah. Your toilet should be on a sensor as well, really. Mm -hmm. But they should also have a way of getting air. So there should be potentially a door grill or a wall grill to allow air to go into the room with the door closed. Because yeah. usually the door is closed when you're using it. That's right. Um, the other thing is that they need to be ducted directly out of the building envelope, not just venting into the roof space. This is crazy. You know, these are the they're bread right. and butter things yeah. that need to be considered. But you start doing those things with your ventilation system for your home, it enables you to then start getting a more, or, or heading towards a more airtight building envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. This room's looking a little bit, um, a little bit funny, so it's getting really cool on that ridge. This is very common in, in these type of um, brick veneer homes where they don't have any insulation just behind the corners. That's a pretty common place, I'd say, for um, moisture to build up as well. So this area here is completely missing in insulation. And um, just in that bedroom as well, there's a massive insulation hole around where that downlight is. It just goes to show how important it is to, um, to insulate properly. But in most circumstances, it can be very difficult to insulate everything perfectly because usually they try and stop the insulation where the actual battens are uh, rather than carefully cutting the insulation so that they have the clearances that they need. Air conditioners installed also contribute to significant air leakage. When they put the, the pipes, the copper pipes, through the, the, the gyp rock, uh, they usually don't repair them at all, so they leak really, really badly. Um, this one in particular has got a lot of air leakage and it sort of leaks through the unit um, when you do a blower door test. So usually uh, when we turn on the ducted heating, mm -hmm. we close all the doors of uh, yeah. the toilets or anywhere where the duct, like there's no opening for the ducted heating? Yep, yep, yep. That's, that's not a good idea and the reason being is because you want, your building envelope includes your bathrooms and they're also major sources of moisture as well. Mm -hmm. So it's important that, that those rooms leverage off the warmer air in your main area. Yeah. Even though they might not have a ducted heating outlet, they should be treated as though they're a part of the indoor yeah. of the house and leverage off the heating system in it. Um, there's, I've seen a lot of videos on the internet where they, they talk about putting door seals on, on toilet and bathroom doors. Yeah. It's insanity because these rooms are a part of the building envelope. <laughs> so why are we locking them out of the building envelope? Mm -hmm. we, we, we know that they're quite cold most yes. of the time. That's probably mostly because of the, the, the exhaust fan not having a draft stopper mm -hmm. and because we always close the door to them because we feel them being you know, a cold, cold part of the house. But when you think about it from a comfort perspective, mm -hmm. you want your toilet to be warm, you want your bathroom to be warm so that you're comfortable in there. Yes, um, so yeah, the doors should always be left open to these rooms. It's important for them to remain a healthy part okay. of the building envelope. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise we shut them off and we treat them like outside. We're going to tape up the return and all the supply vents for the ducted heating system to see how much the ducted heating system is contributing to air leakage in this home. So, there we go. So here's another one, here's a supply vent. We're gonna tape up and we're gonna test it and see what the leakage rate is. Then pull all the tape off 
and then run another test and see what the leakage difference is. The other thing that we're also going to do is um, check to see how much the exhaust fans are leaking in your bathrooms as well and we'll, we'll probably tape those up too and get a difference. difference with and without the exhaust fans. We need this surface area, do you have that on hand? You do? Okay. Now the reason why we need the volume and the surface area is because we're going to give a permeability rate of the home and an ACH at 50 which is an air change an hour at an elevated pressure of 50 pascals. So we're going to set the range here and I'm going to put into the manometer the volume. What was the volume? Uh, 550 cubic meters. 550. Okay. Now we'll set a speed of all the windows are closed. Yes. All the doors are open internally. Good. Check. That's pretty good. So we're getting we're getting 3 ACH at 40 pascal. We're getting 4 ACH at 50 pascal. That's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Isn't it? It's really good. Now that's with your ducted heating system sealed up Seal. though. Should we do a, just a quick check and we'll, we'll take off that and tape much, from yeah. the ducted heating system, see how it changes the number. So we're, we're getting quite a lot of pressure coming from the ducted heating system, which tells me that there's a massive hole in the ducted heating system. Let's check out the fans. There's a little bit of air moving there, but it's not too bad. There's some air coming out of that, yeah. So I'm gonna take off the plastic from the return on the ducted heating system. Let's take off the others and see if it changes it even further. 5.6. And what was it before? With everything taped up? 4.4. 4.4. So there you go, 1.2. So at the moment we're inducing a pressure of 50 pascals. And we can clearly see just above the window that there's air leakage. With thermal imaging it's picking up the cold air from outside coming up through the, the cavity, the wall cavity, straight up above the window. Painters usually only cork the sides of the windows or whatever they can physically see. See even here at the bottom of the window, <laughs> it's actually a lot worse than above the window. Look at the leakage that's happening around this door, around the sides. We're going to do a negative test here, which means that it's going to pull the, all your um, draft stoppers closed. We can do a, a positive pressure test, Uvi. But um, if we do that, it'll blow your draft stoppers open. So we, we, we might just do that anyway and see what the number looks like, how, how different it looks. So at the moment, we've got a, a baseline or a pressure differential between inside and outside of the house of negative 1.8 pascal, 2 pascal. So it just goes to show that um, when you get a pressure different, or sorry, a temperature differential between inside and outside, you get pressures operating on the building envelope which can induce obviously air leakage. So it's just dropped down now. It's about to capture 53 pascals. So yeah, Uvi, you've got a very airtight building envelope here. That's pretty special. <laughs> but um, I think the, the thing that we see a lot when we do do air tightness testing on residential homes is that when they've got a concrete slab, they're usually a lot more airtight than a home with like floorboards or yeah, um, but then the other issue with a concrete slab potentially is that you get a lot of conduction uh, or thermal bridging happening into the earth. So now we've turned the fan around, so we're going to be pressurising the building envelope. So this home, which was built around about eight years ago, is a, it's a very common home and it's, it's relatively modern. We're getting um, 5.6 ACH at 50 pascals. A good portion of the air leakage is occurring in the ducted heating system, but overall it's, a, it's quite a, an, an airtight home and a little bit of work needs to be um, focused on the actual ventilation strategies in the bathrooms and the toilets. But other than that, it should be quite an efficient home um, compared to a lot of the other building stock throughout Australia.